Welcome back, fourth graders. We're getting back into our article, The Road to Revolution. We were talking yesterday about another one of our vocabulary words that came up in our story, the word tyranny. And tyranny, once again, was the unfair treatment by people with power over others. So in our reading, the person in, that had the power was King George III. So we could say it was the unfair treatment by King George III, because he had power, it was his unfair treatment over the colonists, the people that lived here in America. Now, when we left off, we had a post-it note with a date, a year. Notice it was long before this one. This situation happened after this situation. This event happened before this, in 1763. It's kind of setting the stage for the revolution. So we looked in our reading, and you should have found, here's the year, 1763. And if you read the sentences around it, you'll find the main idea. What is it about? So the colonies were ruled by Britain. In 1763, Britain ended a long war with France and needed money. Well, there you go. So what happened in 1763? Britain, or a lot of us just know it as England, they ended a long war with France. I added this part about King George because they needed money, so King George III began taxing the colonists. So I put, and King George III started taxing the colonists, the people that were here in America. Now, you might have written this differently. That's okay. But the main idea is that they had this war with France. And as a result, England was trying to collect money. They were, sh they were short of money. They needed money. So they started taxing the colonists. So that started to create this bad feeling. And then when this event happened and other events happened, it blew up into what we now know as a revolution. That was our other word we had. So let's continue on a little bit more today. We left off here about the king's tyranny. It says... Britain sent troops to America to enforce the king's rules. Thousands were stationed in Boston. There were constant arguments between the soldiers and the colonists. Many of the colonists boycotted, ooh, that's a word I wish they put in dark print, boycotted or refused to buy. Oh, boycotted means you refuse to buy something. You see how they have that in commas? right after the word boycotted. So they boycotted, or in other words, they refused to buy goods that were shipped from England. So they said, you know what? We're upset about all this stuff. We're just going to stop buying your things. So England, you can send over as much as you want. We're not going to buy. We're refusing to buy. We're boycotting them. All right, we're going to skip ahead a little bit because I see another date coming up that must be pretty important, another event. So Christopher's funeral happened, and just two weeks after the funeral, a group of angry colonists approached a British soldier. It was March 5th, 1770. The colonists began insulting the soldier. Before long, the mob was throwing ice and stones at him. More British troops arrived, and then... Bang! A soldier fired his gun into the crowd in the scuffle. More soldiers fired after a few seconds of shocked silence. Five colonists died in all. This incident would become known as the Boston Massacre. Oh, that gunshot startled me a little bit. But that was the first shots fired then in what was known as the Boston Massacre. Massacre. You saw that, that word right there, the Boston Massacre. Again, that could be in dark print word too. We had, you know, the word boycotted earlier, and now we have this word. There's, you know, that's the thing about vocabulary words. Where do you stop? Which ones do you pick? There's lots of good words that we could use as vocabulary words. Whenever you reach a word that you're not sure about, like massacre, you would just sound it out the best you could and you'd read the things around it to try to figure out, I wonder what that must be. 
And then hopefully later on, as you read more, it tells you what it is, or at least helps you understand more about what it is. In any case, I picked two more words I wanted to put into our notes. Two words that I think you're going to need to remember. I put in here the colonists, because you're going to keep hearing that over and over again. Who are the colonists? So put that in your notebook. That's people who live in a colony like the 13 original colonies that were here in America. So the people that lived in our colonies, the ones here in America, were called colonists. But really, anybody that lives in a colony, that word colony, is a colonist. So we have the colonists, and then we have these what are called red coats. I put that actually highlighted in kind of red. And the redcoats are the British soldiers. Soldiers from England or Britain or Great Britain or the British Isles. I put all the different ways that people refer to that, that country or that area. They're British soldiers. A lot of times you just think of them as English or British. But all of these words are used to describe Great Britain or England. Now, that information about redcoats is actually here. It was a, a text feature. They put it in with a, a picture of the red coats right here, those soldiers. It said British soldiers were often called red coats because of their uniforms. Again, makes total sense why they would refer to them as red coats. So this caption, usually captions are kind of underneath a picture, but this time they put a caption right kind of in amongst the picture. Remember way back when we did text features, we talked about all these kinds of things. And sure enough, here it shows up in our article today. So I put red coats as another one of our notes. Let's make sure we include that in our notebooks. And then for your assignment today, I have two more post-it notes. I put them over on this side so they wouldn't get in the way of my, my writing now. I just stuck them over here. And I put on one of them March 5th, 1770, and then I jump ahead to April 19th, 17, 1775. So you have to take the information, remember we have two of them so far, and now you're going to make two more notes. March 5th, 1770, that came right from here. So again, if you just read around that area and find the main idea, what happened? What occurred? Maybe you're going to have to read a little bit further on to find out the main idea or what you would say for that one for 1770. And then I'm going to put this in your assignment today, and it's up to you to read this for yourself and look for that second post-it note. I see a bunch of other dates and years, important things over here. So you have to make a post-it note on your own today from this date, and you have to find it in our reading that's included on your assignment page. So when you finish those notes today and you finish those post-its, you're gonna be submitting this finally in Canvas so we can get a picture of how your notes are looking. Maybe try to take a picture so you can get both of these things in one or just send two different pictures. But I'd also like you, if you would or could, to add some drawings, maybe create a scene of some sort that goes along with our history of the Northeast and the, the road to revolution. Maybe some sort of picture. Maybe you wanna put a map of some of the colonies and put that included in here. You also have that information from Mr. Van Horn, the information on the Northeast. Maybe there's something in there that you could draw or use for sketching. In any case, add some stuff to this, make sure it's all complete. And once you feel good about it, Take a picture, submit it into Canvas so we can see your progress so far. All right, good luck. We will see you again tomorrow.